Hello friends, thank you for tuning back in. Welcome to the channel. F*** it, that'll do, let's go home. <laughs> Should have probably done this off cam, but never mind. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. So we're back here in Surbiton. We're just finishing this house rewind now. Um, this is that house which was sort of rewired and now we're sort of re-rewiring it. Um, and it's going all right. We're literally just finishing the last few bits and pieces. Well, when I say that, we still got a fair bit to do, but we're, we're finishing it now. We're on the final furlong. Um, I'm just putting this microwave oven in and uh, if I can get this sticky label off. Kitchen's almost done. The fume hood is in the cooker hood. Um, sockets are all on more or less. Dave's just gone out to go and get some plate screws because we haven't got long enough plate screws. He's gone out to go and get some 75 mil plate screws. Um, and otherwise, I've got to do the fuse board and that's about it here. There's not a huge amount left to do. Okay, right, one microwave oven, that'll do, all right. So yeah, um, it's going all right. These are the sockets on the other side of the kitchen. Um, we're actually using MK here, we've sort of decided to branch out into the world of MK, just, uh, I've, I mean, I've fitted it before, but not for ages. Normally I just, I just use, you know, other brands, but this is the first time I've used MK, and I'm, it is, I, I will be honest, it is quite nice. Um, I've got one of the fuse spurs here somewhere. Two seconds, I'll go and grab one. Like I say, it's not very often I fit MK star. I mean, it is, it's definitely on the premium end of wiring accessories. There's no, you know, there's no doubt about that. It is on the upper end of, it's up there with Schneider and, you know, those sort of brands. So it is, it is very good, but it is expensive. Um, but we just, we finished fitting this kitchen out in MK and it, it does, I don't know, it does look nice. There's just something it's got, which, you know, like we're using those lap ones. And they're all right. And I've, yeah, I've used those everywhere and they are good. But there is just, it's a finish. And I've never really, you know, when you've done a kitchen like this and all the mosaic tiling's all on, it all looks very nice. And it just, it all comes together. And then when you look at the sockets like this, they do, it does have an edge to it, I'll be honest. It does look good. Okay, now that looks official. I guess it works. <laughs> we took the idea from some of the people in the comments about uh, how to level up back boxes and stuff, and this seemed to be the way that everybody was saying. <laughs> it's a good way of doing it. Just use a 20 mil uh, metal coupler and the brass bushes. <laughs> it works well. No, I don't think I need three inch screws to do this. Back in a sec. If there's other electricians out there watching this, you'll know what I mean when I say you have a tub which is just full of just crap. You end up, because you just haven't got time to sort all these bits out. So you start with, you know, I have these tubs here, the Stanley tubs. So this is two inch eight screws, but they're not two inch eights, they're three. I don't know why they're in there. And they've got random tubs like this. Right, Long Yun. It's a fucking cracker of a drill, this. I love it. This is actually, this is only supposed to be like a two week review of this drill. This was the cheapest drill I could find on Amazon that fitted the criteria I was after. Two batteries, one hour charger, twin speed gearbox, um, one and a half amp hour batteries. Um, they, did, they have sort of mercilessly copied the 12 volt Makita design on the back of the battery. That's just a blatant copy. And it was only, I think it was 21 quid. And, <laughs> it's, I love it. It's just, I thought it was really, I, although it sounds wrong for a review, I almost didn't want to like it because it was, you know, it was like 20 quid. But it, I have beaten the shit out of this thing for the last sort of four weeks. Honestly, I have beaten the shit out of this thing and it's just stood up to it. <laughs> it's just brilliant. That was the other thing. With these outside sockets, um, I mean, this one here is a British General socket. And they're quite good. They're, they're, you know, they're nice. They've got the latching fronts on. 
they are quite nice. You know, they're all right. They're nothing. It's one of those things. They're middle of the road. They're nothing special. But on the back of the socket, you've got a 20 mil knockout. Now this cable here, this is just on a few spur in the kitchen, so you just switch it on when you want the outside socket. I've just put a 20 mil stuffing gland in. How does everybody else do it? I, I wouldn't mind hearing your feedback if you know, because I mean, some people just cut the 20 mil hole and they just bring the wire in the back, but that doesn't really give you any, it's not waterproof, do you know what I mean? If you are pressure washing, because the tap's here, if you're pressure washing and stuff, it'd be feasible to assume that you'll get water, I don't know. Just put it below, I mean, this is the way that I do it. I just put a 20 mil gland and the wire just goes straight in the back there. That's how I do it. But if anybody does it differently or you've got a better way, put it down below. It'd be interesting to hear how you guys do it. See if I can do a ZS test without tripping the RCD. Sometimes it, they don't always work. They some, I'm always a bit nervous. If you've got to do something like a ZS test in like a, you know, somewhere where they need to have the power on, you always, I know the non-trip loop test shouldn't, it shouldn't trip RCDs, but sometimes they do. And you're always a bit sort of wincing when you press the button, <laughs> hoping it's not going to trip and somebody loses six hours worth of data on their computer, you know. This one's pretty good. So it tripped one last week um, and I haven't had that in ages. 0.39, I'd say that's perfectly satisfactory. Right. It is time to get a new test meter, actually. That one's... Uh, seen better days but it'll do for a minute i find that if you use this stretchy cord you get different readings i normally use this one and i use one of those breakout boxes because you just get more you just get more accurate readings with that this one i find when you plug it in you, and you stretch it and stuff you get the readings change and it's i mean it works but it's just not as accurate, I guess. All right, that's done. Long in, you can go in the bag. Right, let's go inside and do the next job, which I think is the upstairs lights. I've got to switch those on. That reminds me, actually. Those, a subscriber sent in for me to try them. And they were the sort of thing, they sat in my bag and I didn't really use them to begin with because they're just not as, I didn't think they were as versatile as the normal snips that I use, which are, somewhere here. The ones you just saw me using there, those ones, those are the ones that I use sort of everywhere. They're just like my go-to set of snips, a little short 160 mil pair of cutters. But I have been using these. I find these are better for things like data and telephone. They're just, they've got a really nice flat nub on them on top so you can pull wires through pipes and stuff. I am starting to come round to them. They are, I'll keep you posted because they're not cheap, they're about 65 quid, but I'll keep you posted on what they're like. Before I go upstairs, I will upload my receipts. This is me trying to be efficient. So like every time I buy site now, I use, I use QuickBooks for my accounting. So you can uh, you just photograph your receipts and then it deducts it automatically from your, uh, you know, from your income and stuff. Basically, I'm just trying to make myself a little bit more efficient. So people are thinking of coming into this trade. You're not always doing electrical work. You're, you're doing site-based admin as well. Okay, so I'm just literally going around now, just popping these dimmers on. He's having dimmers in every room for these lights. So I just wire these up, and that's this bit up, done up here. I've got to test it, but it's working, so to speak. So then it'd be able to have a sleeving like this, where <laughs> when you buy it, you buy it as like a 100 meter hank. And of course, when you start it, you would just, what you, you take the one cut end and you just keep, you just keep cutting that end. And eventually one day you're in a hurry and you just say, oh, it and you just cut one out and then you end up with four pieces that are, have got ends and then you get to this point now where there's like 66 cut ends in there now that's why I've, i mean that's what the point i've got to now with this but i did buy this one here from I think it came from tool station actually where it was on a roll that's quite cool because you get the live and you get the neutral as well that was quite cool a couple of people were asking in previous comments um how do you wire the light switches and stuff? Do you bring the neutrals down to the switch or do you just put them in a junction box upstairs and then just bring a switch wire down? Personally, this is the way that I do it. I just bring the feed in and feed out down here and then it just goes into a triple Wago connector. So those are your neutrals. Earths just go into the back box there, into the lug. 
and that's it. You just have your, your one switch wire going out to your lights. That's just the way that I've always done it. I just, I like to bring the live and neutral, you know, your feed in and feed out down to the switch. It's just the way that I've always done it. Also, I like it because that way you don't have a junction box under the floor or up in the loft or somewhere where it's, um, I just think this is an easier way to wire. The only thing is, obviously you've got more wires in the back box, so I find you, I just use 35 mil boxes everywhere all the time now, because I just find it's just a better way to work. But um, there's nothing wrong with taking a switch wire down to the switch only. I mean, it's a perfectly acceptable way of doing it. This is just the way that I do it, you know? But everyone's different, you know? I won't bother screwing these right up to the wall, because I've actually got to take this off to do their bonding and stuff. That reminds me, actually. Where is it? This bag, do you know what? I put in a review a couple of months ago and ITS supplied this bag and I said for 20 quid it was well worth it. It's a piece of shit. Who designed this bag where the handle sits into the bag? Because what happens is you, you, know, you put your tools in like that and then you, you're doing this battle trying to get the handle. Honestly, that bag, I know ITS sell this but please do not buy it. It is f***ing hideous. Uh, but anyway, what I was going to say uh, my old man was fitting some wood flooring a couple of weeks ago, and this, I mean wood, it's not wood, it's like this compressed hard MDF, or like, I don't know what it is. Uh, it's, it's not expensive stuff, this was just like from b and I think it was like £10 a square metre, it's just like a budget end laminate flooring. And he had a little pile of them, and he's got an open fire, like a wood, you know, wood fire at home, and he just threw on four pieces of this, literally these sort of cuts, just the end cuts where you butt up to the wall. Um, went up like a Roman candle, literally. You know, and you look at places, I mean, I'd have thought these sort of things need like some sort of minimum fire rating, but maybe they don't, I don't know. If anybody knows what, for like flooring and stuff, what the fire regs are for it, leave it below, because this stuff, honestly, you put a match to that, it'll go up like a candle. It's incredible how flammable, and it's literally flammable. It's not like you've got to hold, you could put a match under that and it'll go, it'll go up like a f***ing candle. It's, you know, and then you think, if you've got a whole house kitted out with this stuff, you know, you think of things like Grenfell Tower and stuff, you know, if somebody has a two bedroom flat and they're kitted out with this everywhere, you know, I mean, you're toast if this goes up, really, it's, I'm surprised how people, I don't know, if anybody knows what the rules are, leave it below, it'd be interesting to know, because I don't understand how, how that's acceptable in today's, I just don't get it, you know, but anyway, comment below. I'm doing battle with the, uh, smoke alarms at the moment I'm just insulation testing them and uh, there is an argument about uh, whether you should put smoke alarms on the same breaker as a lighting circuit or have it as like a dedicated as, as on, on its own dedicated you know MCB or something and personally I'm of the opinion that you should share it off a local lighting circuit personally that's, that's very controversial um, it's just my opinion because I've seen so many times where if if you have the smoke alarms on their own circuit in a fuse board, I see you've got a full RCBO board like here and the smoke alarms are on the end on its own RCBO or whatever. If it's on its own circuit, the problem is the amount of times customers will just turn it off because, or there's a fault and the RCBO trips or the whatever. If it trips, customers just, because it's not an essential thing, customers won't repair it. And the smoke alarms will start to beep if they've got battery backup, but the problem with that is I have known customers, if the MCB has tripped, they will literally stop the beeping, they'll just take the batteries out. So they've got nothing at all. If the smoke alarms share a lighting circuit, it's not, you can't just turn it off, you have to find the fault. So there, there is argument on both sides, but personally I sway more to, the, more to the, the principle of it should be shared off a local lighting circuit, because if it does create, if, you know, if there's ever a fault, it forces the customer to, to fix it rather than just leave the breaker switched off. But that's uh, that's very controversial. So um, yeah, it's just my opinion. Right. right, let's load this shit up. Get the fuck out of here. Fucking place. A couple of people in the comments now have. I think apprentices and stuff who are like coming into this industry and shit like that and they're asking you know it's a common question that keeps coming up you know can you how hard is it for me to work for myself and stuff and to be honest it's I don't know it's you just got to make your own decision on it I think it's personally I wouldn't change it I think it's I mean I say that I'm standing here on a Saturday night and it's 
I don't know, it's about half seven, eight o'clock, you know, but I wouldn't change it. It's a pain in the ass, but it's just, you just gotta make your own decision on it, you know. I think it's saying, it's not for everybody, I think it's, I'm gonna do a video just on this, just on this topic of working for yourself. I'll do a video especially on that for apprentices, because um, to be honest, I could fill I could fill an hour talking about it. Um, but just for you know, just for tonight, yeah, I'd say try it. But it's, I mean, as light-hearted as this is on camera, yeah, we all have a bit of a laugh in the comments and stuff, and it's nice and easy and light-hearted. There is a serious underlying tone to it. You know, it is, it is a serious job. Um, but anyway. That's enough of that for tonight. I'm going home. Subscribe, watch another video, patron, comments. See you later.